Welcome to Side by Side, a podcast where I, Robert Kwong, take you inside conversations with artists, creatives, healers, and warriors taking the charge in their transformational story. Today's guest is screenwriter and higher education professional Ashley Griggs. She earned her BA in film studies and French at the College of William and Mary, and later received her MFA in dramatic writing from the Tisch School of the Arts at NYU, where she was awarded the Future Screenwriters Fellowship. She has written for the narrative podcast, The Host, directed plays in New York City and Los Angeles, and is a mentor for the nonprofit Bright Girl LA. In this conversation, we dive inside Ashley's early influences as a cinephile and storyteller, the challenge of balancing personal fulfillment with professional output. And lastly, we talk about our upcoming online writer's workshop called Embracing the Multidisciplinary Writer, Lessons Across Genre and Form. We will be exploring a variety of writing disciplines and holding the space for writers to connect the dots beyond industry specialization. To learn more, click on the link in the show notes or visit my events page at www. RobertQuanHome.com. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this conversation for my podcast side by side. And, you know, we have a little bit of history, you and I, so I'm very excited to dive into this. And um, I think this conversation will be really interesting for the both of us. This is kind of like a formal question, but I felt that wanted to ask you, like, do you want to give a little introduction about who you are and what your background is overall? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Ashley Griggs. I am uh, from Herndon, Virginia. It's like Northern Virginia. I am a writer. I studied film studies and French in college, went to the College of William and Mary, um, and then moved to New York and studied dramatic writing where I met you, Robert, at uh, NYU at Tisch. Yeah, then I moved to Los Angeles and I am sort of pursuing various forms of creative writing, screenwriting, uh, theater, that type of thing. Been working at UCLA in various capacities for the last 10 years as well. So Mm -hmm. uh, have done a lot of work in... um, like running academic programs. Some of them have been writing programs and entertainment related programs at UCLA. Uh, Just trying to help support other writers as well as work on my own writing. Yeah. (laughs) Those are the highlights. But yeah, you know, very much you and I are in the same boat in that way. And you mentioned you grew up in Virginia, right? Mm -hmm, I did. Um, Given that you clearly have a passion for storytelling, for cinema, for entertainment. Growing up, did you have like favorite movies or shows or did you have like very fond memories of things around storytelling and cinema that you recall? Yeah, I would say as a kid growing up in the 90s, primarily, um, I was really obsessed with TV. I mean, as a little kid, I was like into Party of Five and ER and Friends and sort of like ran the gamut of the types of TV. Um, I was named after a soap opera character from The Young and the Restless. So I grew up watching soaps uh, from birth pretty much. Yeah, Ashley Abbott from Young and the Restless. I but, see. Yeah. And that's kind of a generational thing. My grandmother watched it with my mom. My mom watched it with us. Mm, me and my sister. Mm-hmm. And so I loved anything related to TV and then movies as well. I would say my dad was really into like old movies. Um, So we watched, you know, a lot of It's a Wonderful Life and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and like Hitchcock stuff. And that was something I loved as well. Um, And then I was always really into like a good rom-com Julia Roberts, Sandra Bullock, anything from like that 90s, late 90s, early aughts era. So I was really like pretty obsessed with storytelling, but I didn't really know I wanted to be a storyteller until um, maybe after college. 
Uh, I think like there were pieces of it that I had considered. I was really into uh, journalism in high school. I kind Mm. of thought maybe I would write for a magazine. Maybe I would do feature stuff for a newspaper. I couldn't really visualize it. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in college, I just, for fun, you had to take a uh, freshman seminar and there were so many different options. And I took a film studies one just for fun. And after like the first lecture, I was really hooked. So I was like, maybe I will minor in this. Maybe Mm -hmm. I could take more classes just to, because I'm interested in these topics. Like took a class in police drama and took a class in, um, you know, a lot of like psychoanalysis related to film and all those kind of things. And I just really loved it. And then eventually I was like, why am I in a major that I actively think makes me (laughs) uncomfortable and anxious? And um, I was studying international relations for a while. And yeah, I liked it. But I also was like, I don't see my future in this necessarily. I think the history is interesting. I think politics are interesting. But I really love film. So I made that switch when I was like a junior in college and um, on some sort of film related creative track ever since. Well, you also sound like someone who has like multifaceted interests, right? Very much like myself. You mentioned what IR and Mm -hmm. French and film studies, right? Certainly people don't like, you know. Sometimes we go into schooling and especially higher education with like it's got to have this like perfect like five year plan. The first three or four years is going to be at school and everything, and um, mm-hmm. you kind of start to build up this like this narrative about how your life is supposed to go, and then there are kind of like twists and turns, pun intended, right? So yeah, yep. it's kind of funny how that works out because I was like a music major, and then for grad school, coming from that background. You know, what right did I have to apply for dramatic writing, right? Unfortunately, I was very uh, lucky that they (laughs) accepted me and both of us. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And you're right. Like, there's so much, it it gives you so much, like, texture for your writing. And also just, like, it's important to have other interests. And and then music, you know, obviously is such a big part of your work, too. So I feel like, of course, you can do both. You know, I don't know why we do try to limit ourselves when we're younger. We think that's the way to do it, but of course you can. Yeah, I, I often think about climbing the ladder. We're often taught like when you want to climb that ladder, you got to kind of be like straight and narrow, like very narrowly focused and keep rising up in some ways. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, in many ways, I had to dismantle that for myself just based on the way that my curiosity was leading me. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned some films that you like. So. I heard Hitchcock. What are some other artists or like writers that have inspired you or currently inspire you to continue writing? Ooh, that's a good question. I would say like more recently, I guess there have been a couple films that have really reminded me of how much I love film. Um, I really loved um, Past Lives, that which yeah. came out this year. Mm-hmm. Um primarily because it was like nice to see how powerful a quiet film could be again. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like TV has been so excellent over the last 10 years. Sometimes that has drowned out how moving a film can be. And I really love film, but yeah, I would say like growing up, I was really into, so I did really like Hitchcock. Um, I, I, again, was sort of into well-made romantic comedies, like anything Richard Curtis did. Mm -hmm. Um, Notting Hill was great. Uh, Mike Nichols was a big sort of hero of mine. I loved Closer. I love Closer. You're like the first person I know who's like, who loves that a lot, Mike Nichols. And he has a comedy background. I saw some of his like early comedy sketches with Elaine May or something like that but anyway Uh I love Mike Nichols too so we have that in common oh nice yeah I I saw that in the theater I think when I was in high school and I was like that's what I want to do I don't you know it felt like reading a book or obviously like seeing a really good play Mm -hmm. um 
yeah, it was just so specific and so emotional. And, you know, I loved analyzing it. And, and I was taking like a film studies class in high school, didn't realize that's what I love to do, but I was obsessed with that class. So it makes sense in retrospect. And I remember like after seeing that movie, going up to my teacher after the weekend and I was just so excited to like break it down for her. So I'd say that type of film, I really love anything that like Charlie Kaufman did. Yeah, I don't know. And one thing I've noticed too is that like when I was young, there were so many great movies and and TV shows that I watched that had people of color at the center, but it definitely was like a tiny percentage of what I watched, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's something that I think in terms of my work and the work that I really appreciate right now is watching some of those same similar quality projects, like a really well-made romantic drama or family drama or something um, that just has a different kind of person at the center. That's something that excites me now. And that's something mm-hmm. that I I think those are the type of projects that I, I want to do. Yeah. Well, you mentioned past lives and it's so nice to see like movies as like character studies, right? Similar to Closer is I consider to be like character studies, right? Yeah. And it's so fascinating seeing representation really impact you like once Mm -hmm. you see something like that it does normalize things and I think when you're used to seeing yourself on screen and all around you in advertising in magazines maybe it feels like something that you take for granted but when it's not there like when you travel to another country for example where you're not the majority you definitely can feel the difference in the way that you reflect so I love films like that where it's just like not only is it just a well-made interesting piece of art but I think it's also influencing people in ways beyond just the story itself like you're saying and I think that's important to acknowledge about this very visual storytelling medium right for sure Um, for sure and like what you mentioned there too is it's it's about having you know different characters and different experiences at the center but it's also just about the different stories that can happen because you have a different character at the center. Like I haven't seen a film about or set in New York city that felt as authentic or exciting in a long time as that movie. And it was really because it was like the neighborhoods it was set in both internationally and in New York too. It's like, it just gives you a a different texture of life. Um, I think, I think part of that film was in the East Village. And I was like, wow, you know, these feel like the streets and the experiences and the colors that I see when I'm there. And I haven't seen that on screen. That was really amazing to see. Yeah, it's kind of nostalgic, right? For anyone who's lived in New York City, like once you see it on screen, immediately like, oh, I know that place. You can't help it, right? (laughs) Yeah, for sure. So this is a broad question, and you've kind of touched on this already, but, you know, we were trained to write in different mediums and forms as storytellers, even under kind of the premise of uh, scripted writing. Why do you think it matters for a writer to practice and experiment across different structures and forms, even if they do have a preference or have like an established niche? Yeah, I, this was something I didn't really realize until we went to grad school, Um, I applied to a bunch of screenwriting programs, and most of them were strictly screenwriting. A few had like the option of maybe doing some film and some television, but Mm -hmm. there were no programs that had theater as well as film, as well as TV, and like talking about how all those things sort of have similar roots and where they interconnect, where they differ. Um, So I'm really grateful for having sort of been forced to have that experience. I think that's sort of what drew me to the program, but, um, and it, but I think it also was New York as well. And so um, I wasn't expecting how enriching that was going to be as an experience. And from having done that, I would say every type of writing has its own strengths and, facets that make it interesting and fresh. And there's so many different 
styles within each medium. So there are things you can absolutely learn and apply towards other mediums that really make your your writing more full bodied or more interesting, more, you know, you can experiment in ways that you wouldn't just think about doing if you were just under like under the rules of what that medium claims to be. So with screenwriting, you know, there's a very rigid format structure. And I think taking something like poetry and looking yeah. at how you can make certain words feel more act, certain verbs feel more active or how you can use metaphor and that really conjures up images that absolutely will strengthen your writing it will make it pop on the page it'll make it inspire you know imagery in other people's minds that you might work with to produce that film so i think it's important at, just like any sort of physical exercise it's important to exercise out all of your muscles and those creative muscles come from other forms of writing. I appreciate that now too, especially knowing that a lot of other programs are very focused on one track, like you say, and we were perfectly okay not having to declare like a focus, even though that came later and having like a general education around writing, around history of it. And we were also exposed to other forms, like you say, like, you know, sometimes we did see poetry or a really short scene just by itself or radio plays, which um, which has really transformed into basically pot podcast plays in many yeah. ways. So mm -hmm. um, it's interesting to see it continuing to evolve. But I think part of that comes from learning all these traditions, learning what's been done, learning some of the rules. So maybe you can try to go outside of it. And um, yeah, it certainly it was like later, I really appreciated it because I, I wasn't super intimidated by the fact of going into another form necessarily, right? Where somebody else who's only done one might say like, well, I just can't. Whereas for us, we might say like, well, we can make that work. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like every type of art or creative expression is always undergoing change and new influences, like tension is making it um, evolve. And so where one form might, be a little stagnant or maybe it's been it's not as affected by like a certain type of conversation or a certain type of mm -hmm. you know uh evolution another art form might be and then finding ways where those things are connected just evolves it even more you know obviously i don't think tv would exist if theater didn't exist right and same right. with like the camera the camera coming together with theater the, the interaction of that really helped create and shape television. And so if we think yeah. about even the possibilities within each form, it's like they have to interact in order for the form to move forward. Absolutely. And also, you know, when we talk about the muscle of writing, we're thinking of writing as a tool for everyday life. You know, I, I'm often I do think about the fact that because we spend so much time just writing, practicing writing, that it's like a muscle that can take across like different aspects of my life. So I'm curious to ask you, like, as far as like aspects of writing or writerly muscles, like what are some muscles that actually do transfer to other areas of your work in admin work at university and just like in other areas of your life? Because certainly I can think of some examples myself. Yeah, well, definitely at work, I feel like it's important to be able to communicate things clearly and concisely mm -hmm. um, in a way that sometimes evokes emotion. Because I, I think, you know, often um, I've been in positions where I'm either write copy to encourage people to enroll in a certain type of class or program, or I'm trying to explain something to someone, even in a conversation. Um, I used to have a lot of conversations with students about what type of writing class works well for me. And I mean, obviously those conversations are about creative writing or about some form of writing, but also it's important to be able to like see the perspective of that person that you're having the conversation with. 
to understand like what their little hero's journey is in terms of wanting to pursue a goal, wanting to take a class, what do they want to get out of it? So I feel like, you know, being able to speak to someone clearly, concisely and empathetically is directly related to writing because we're always trying to look from the perspective of characters of other other protagonists out there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think even just as a thought pattern, it's important to be able to see through other people's eyes and then in written form, in uh, digital form, whatever it's important to be able to communicate that um, in a way that like is either persuasive or, um, you know, really communicates what you, what you are intending to communicate to someone. So I think in a professional way, it's been really helpful to be a writer, uh, creative writer specifically, because you know how to make an argument, you know how to set a scene, and then you know how to have a conversation with someone that's like not just a one-sided conversation. And in a way that's hopefully pretty humanistic and can be organic if we wanted to. And that's, that, that is a skill, I think. And I absolutely agree with you. I'll say in addition to that, you know, for myself, I've definitely used writing for self-reflection. And, you know, this is something that Roxane Gay talks about, but she talks about the term trauma writing, uh, mm-hmm. which is just like a practice for your own nervous system, for your own reconciliation. And of course, there can be there will be narratives around that, which can help you kind of process and untangle some of our own personal stories. So I know for sure I have used journaling, different exercises to support my own well-being, essentially. And, you know, I think we've all used writing in some way, whether it's through journals or just sometimes we need to get some things out, you know, and it's helpful to externalize that rather than keep it all inside. So I, yeah. I've I've seen I've definitely you know that's something I always support writers to explore not as just like a trade skill but it can help improve your quality of life in my opinion. For sure, I so I had had like ten people recommend the artist way to me over the yeah. last five <laughs> years, and so I finally did it at the start of this year, and I was so happy that I finally did. I, I always thought that I um, just didn't really have the time. I needed to like focus on my creative stuff, did not have 10 to 12 weeks to dedicate to what felt like a practice that wasn't generative, really was, but I, it didn't feel like it was going to be. Um, but it really fell in line with exactly what you just said. It was a lot of like jumping out your ideas onto the page just to get your thoughts out of your head. I think a lot of times we're thinking in words and sentences and everything, but when you don't put it down on paper, you're just letting those things stew in your mind and fester. And that's where anxiety can come from and confusion and inability to make decisions and all that. So I think um, journaling as a, just a general process, whether it's you write three pages in the morning or you just journal at some point during the week. I do think it's really healthy and I think uh, it's probably important for everyone. Um, Mm -hmm. Wish they, maybe they do teach kids about it in school these days, but I wish that had been something that they really like emphasized when we were in school, like elementary school. I I mean, you know, I, I definitely, I don't, I don't recall being exposed to that, you know, especially that early on. And, you know, I've had similar conversations with other people about meditation. Like this is just a tool, a practical skill that you can introduce to, you know, in elementary school, basically the same way that you would with spelling and writing, uh, yeah. but also very much as a, as a tool to support us, not just for some forward trajectory of our life. And um, certainly I hope in education, we can maybe speak on that a little bit more. Speaking of schooling, based on your observations and your work, you know, supporting students and writers, what are some of the biggest challenges you've seen in people trying to have a sustainable writing practice? So this is not necessarily a conversation about people who have chosen, you know, to pick another focus, to go in a different direction, but for the writers who do want to write, but can struggle to sustain it, what have you seen that have come up as like think obstacles, things that get in the way? Yeah, I think one issue that can come up for a lot of writers is it's so easy to deprioritize your writing or to even be precious about it and think, I need to 
have like absolute focus. So I need to get X, Y, Z done before I can start writing because uh, I don't want to be distracted by chores or responsibilities or the things related to my day job or anything like that. And I think taking the pressure off of the concept of writing is important because I think that pressure can be really toxic. So that could look like, again, I need to get all of these, like this checklist of responsibilities done before I have the time to do it. And then, Mm -hmm. um, you know, inevitably you're exhausted by the time you've cleaned your apartment, gone to work you know, taking the kids to school or something like that. And then also recognizing that like writing can take place in really uh, short and small moments. It doesn't Mm. need, it doesn't, you don't need a full day. You don't need five hours at a time. Um, Sometimes writing for two minutes can feel as healing as writing for two hours straight. And I think oftentimes we don't write for two hours straight when we do have like two hours to sit at our desk, you know, our minds wander. That's normal. Also for this day and age, like we're all a little preoccupied with shorter attention span, all that. So I think just, um, part of the, even the journaling thing, I think is, um, just letting yourself write for whatever fraction of time you have can be important and writing begets writing. If you write a little, chances are the next day you will be encouraged to write a little bit more. So I think one of the biggest obstacles is kind of like getting on a treadmill. You just have to get on it. You don't have to go, you don't have to like run a 5k. You just have to walk for a minute and then um, letting that kind of grow over time is helpful. Yeah, I I think you're right. We have this kind of image of what a writer looks like when they're, you know, living a life of a writer. The Mm -hmm. long practices, the long and writing every day. I personally don't do that myself. Yeah, and just starting to get really curious about like what setup, what environment, what routine really promotes you to have like a habit of it rather than, for example, like, this has been talked about a lot, but like, if you are always, if you're only waiting for when you're inspired to write, to write, you're probably Mm -hmm. not going to write very little, if at all. Right. Right. So rather than just waiting for that flash of inspiration, which can still happen and you have the techniques and the tools to capture it, but um, making a more of just like, it's a habit, the same way that you would Mm -hmm. brush your teeth and take a shower and I don't know, maybe meditate a little bit before something important, you know, it's the same tool that is meant for us like that in my opinion so definitely echo what you're talking about and speaking of that we have a workshop coming up that you and I will be (laughs) co-facilitating the title of that is embracing the multidisciplinary writer lessons across genre and form and we're both super excited about it and you know definitely drawing our both our experiences as administrators as mentees Um, to support other writers, but also based on our own experience going through training and also going through our own writing practice. So what makes you so excited about upcoming workshop? (laughs) (laughs) I am definitely so, so excited. Um, I've been wanting to find a way to actively help other writers for a, a long time. And I think there have been like little ways that I've done that or like I'm, I, I mentor teens in writing through this group, Write Girl, um, in LA. And like I said, I've worked with creative writing programs here in LA. But the thing that's so exciting about being able to work with you on this workshop is that, you know, we've designed it in a way that really encourages writers to hone in and focus in on their writing skills, their writing journey and like finding new ways to freshen up their writing as a whole to sort of break free from restrictions. And I guess like the more and more I've gone on in life, I've noticed that it's important to, it's so important to just always be learning, always be growing, always be experimenting with new things. Um, 
like being an interdisciplinary artist is like, it's really what we should all be striving towards, I think, as creatives, because you don't want to be um, restricted to just one form. I, it's just, I think that really limits how much your imagination can wander, you know? Um, so I think the concept of this workshop of really giving people an opportunity to practice a bunch of different types of writing, to explore what those careers look like, to interact with other writers who maybe have a variety of backgrounds and interests and experiences. It just, it just sort of like creates a concentrated time to say, okay, the sandbox is quite large. Let's play around. Let's just, you know, go, go crazy a little bit within the sandbox of writing and explore, like really test your limits. There's no barrier to entry. I think any yeah. writer can take this workshop. You can be an a absolute beginner. You could be an exper experienced writer. And there's so much to learn from each other. There's so much to learn from all the different forms. So it's a great opportunity to play. It's a great opportunity to just like dive into creativity. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited to see how it goes. I think it's going to be great. I love the way that we are mixing and combining different focus areas very deliberately because for the experienced writers, we probably have gotten a very focused and at times very specialized form of writing training. And then on the other hand, there could be people who have not explored it at all, or they would never consider themselves to be pursuing a professional writing, but they love writing, you know, as yeah. just like a yeah. form overall. And I think there's room for everyone involved. So for example, some of the things that we want to normalize and introduce in our workshop is to look at something like short form prose writing next to mm -hmm. a script structure, next to a teleplay, next to a marketing campaign for your business, next to this initiative for your nonprofit, next to this research study material, you know, that involves writing. And also looking at writing as a tool, again, to support your own well-being and looking at professional development in a way that hopefully I think is honest and can address specific, specific needs. Because the reason we're excited about this workshop, one of the reasons is because we are drawing on our previous workshop and training experiences in order to try to try to support any gaps that we may have experienced ourselves. One of the areas um, that we would say would be professional development, having earnest conversations about what it's like working in the industry, talking to people who have gone through the ups and downs. And we have lots of um, ideas about potential guest lecturers and guest visitors for that reason too. So we want to come at it as if, as if this is a real part of your everyday life, if you want to pick it as a career, but also as something that can just be with you, um, a part of your everyday life, even if you're not, quote unquote, a professional writer or aspiring to be one. So just putting that out there as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the best thing about the topic too is that it's really infinite if you think about how many types of writing and forms of writing there are to explore. And I think just encouraging people to think outside of the box, to learn, like constantly learn about new new mediums, new forms that they haven't explored. It's like... It's important to learn to learn. Like it's important to remind yourself to wander outside of your box occasionally. Right. So Try new I things think, to experiment. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that that's going to be a really like exciting part of this process. And also it's very much a part of professional development anyway, because how many stories have we heard of writers starting in one form, but maybe finding success in another area? You know, mm -hmm. even if yeah. they majored in this or had this degree, an example I can think of right now that's pretty pretty um, topical right now, Suzanne Collins, who graduated from DDW. And yeah. of course, you know, that is for dramatic writing, scripted writing. But then, mm -hmm. you know, her fame came from writing the novels, The Hunger Games. But then she was able, also able to pen the script itself uh, for yeah. the movies later. And so, again, we find that to be very positive. But we also understand how that is not a 
you may not necessarily think this is the best way to get a movie made, for example.、Right. So we want to hold all of these kind of twists in the road through just really focusing again on your relationship and your practice of writing overall, and to try new things. We certainly don't、um, have any. Prerequisites for what you want to work on, even though we're going to be giving you lots of information and content and learning, but、um, we encourage you to try new things through this, you know, eight-week support structure because we do want to hold at least what you're looking for accountable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I have one last question, which is kind of more of a technical question. So maybe I might put that a little bit earlier in the conversation.、Yeah. But、um, what are your thoughts around self-producing, self-publishing, versus focusing on your portfolio, which we encourage as well, more towards like, for example, submissions and queries? Is it does it have to be an either or? I'm just curious about your reflection on this. That's a great question, and one I've thought a lot about, but I also It's like I've thought about it in different ways at different points in my life.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say right now, I do think it's.、Um, I don't think it's an either or question. I think that you can and probably should try to do both. I, I think self-producing in any capacity is really helpful. For a couple reasons, one, it, it will give you like practical experience and insight into the full process of what you are trying to pursue. If you're pursuing a like creative medium, maybe if you make a short film, you may not be someone who wants to make short films for the rest of your life, but it will、mm-hmm. at least give you insight into the filmmaking process and like all the different pieces that go into that. It also just allow your voice to get out there in a more Uh, direct way. I think it's. I think it's really important to find ways that you can actively、uh, get your creative voice out there. It's very hard in a lot of industries to break in, quote unquote.、Um, and so, I think any opportunity that you can put together of、um, you know showing people who you are. You know, giving someone a work that's more than just a page to read, it will, it will inspire someone to be interested to come interested in your work. And that, honestly, though, could also be finding a, like a zine or a journal or something that will publish a short story, or a poem,、um, as opposed to focusing right away on like how can I publish a book of short stories or poetry. Though you can absolutely self-publish that as well,、um, I think in terms of publishing, I'm less.、Uh, I'm more. I I would. I think it's. I do think there's a lot of merit to following the traditional publishing route, just in terms of reach,、um, the resources、yeah. that publishing houses have. I think that traditional route gives you more access to the things that will help your work. Travel farther, and the same is is true of the entertainment industry too. But I do think it's important to maybe invest in yourself in like a small capacity, at least in terms of making a short film, getting something small published. It invests you more in your work, and it also gets your voice out there. And yeah, yeah. I don't think it's an either or thing, but I do think spending time to put together just a small. Body of work also helps flesh out that voice. So, like one project is not going to tell everyone everything about you.、Um, and it's important if someone loves that one project to have maybe something else that you could hand them if they they ask for something else. So, I think spending a little bit of time on those things is important, but not getting lost in the process of like I need to build up the perfect portfolio, so I can't show anyone anything until I have. Three screenplays, two specs.、Mm-hmm, you know,、mm-hmm. I think just like keep going, keep developing it, but making it a regular practice to writing will just ensure that at some point you'll have enough to show someone. You know, you don't need to have a whole anthology of books ready. You just need to have one and just be working on the next one. 
Right. Whatever is sustainable for you, which is like really kind of the bottom line here. And I love what you brought up because um, sometimes you can, you know, when we are trying to be in L.A. and get an agent, sometimes we get very we put ourselves in a box. Right. All of our stories become scripts or like one hour dramas. Right. Yeah. And. You know, one thing that I hope we can encourage in the workshop, which we talked about as well, looking at being the multi-genre writer is where does this piece of story belong? Where can it shine the most? And if you actually have the skill set and the comfort level and the confidence to actually explore that yourself and know that you can create that, then you can put the stories closer to where it comes out naturally or maybe where it can resonate the most. And sometimes that may be an online podcast. Sometimes that could be a YouTube yeah. video. And sometimes that needs to be, you know, sent out to every agent or something like right. that. Right? right. And I think it's just like we want to encourage people to look at your ability to write as a way and across different forms and genres as a way to sort of like complete the picture that is you as a person. And as an artist, we have so many different facets to us that can be expressed and explored in different ways. Maybe one is a graphic novel. Maybe one should be a poem. You know, certainly I will say, I I hope we can assert that level of confidence and like trust in that we can make the right decision for the story and also for us as writers. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just say too, like one thing I'm super excited to dig into a little bit in this workshop is like alternative forms so one of my best friends i'll do a little shout out kim guvea such a big theater nerd um but really loves also um uh any form of um like alternative storytelling and um, immersive theater and has really helped me like explore some immersive theater in the California area and there are just so many amazing ways that you can tell stories that don't involve costly productions you know I've done like an audio tour that walks through Exposition Park and like through various stories told the history of LA in that place and different like forms um, different time periods with also like such a, a great emotional arc And so there's so many different ways to think about how you can tell a story. They don't all cost like $5 million to make, you know? Right. Um, So just encouraging people to, again, get outside of the box, open the box, expand the box. I think that's going to be really exciting to work with people on. It makes me excited about being an artist, too. Like there's so many ways that art can go. So uh, yeah. Absolutely. I think part of why we're excited is because it also fuels us as people who care about writing, as well people who care about our fellow writers. You know, we've been through very much similar struggles as anybody else who, you know, want to make writing a life for themselves. So um, it's super exciting to be able to do that, to look at our own practice against, you know, what we're espousing. And then also, you know, to not try to do it all alone, which I think is the ultimate mistake as a writer, because it's so easy to for some people i think to go into solitude you know writing can be a very solitary journey but there's something to be said about finding community finding relationships finding people with common interests and common um common passions to really support having more fun and actually using writing as a way to connect as well so hopefully we can support that in our own way next january thank you so much ashley for your time today and uh yeah i can't wait to do this thing with you (laughs) Me too. I'm so excited. Is there anything else, you know, as a last send off, is there anything else you want to say, for example, to listeners who are writers or who are interested in writing? Anything at all? I will say, I think we all are writers. Um, We just write in different ways. So I'd say to anyone out there who's interested in like putting a little time into their writing, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of how much time it will take you. Don't be afraid of your talent level. Don't be afraid of uh, proving yourself to other people. Just write a little bit. It's for you. If it if it one day impacts someone else, that's amazing. But we have the capacity to think and feel, and that's what goes into writing. It's just putting your thoughts and your feelings down on paper. That's all for you. 
and we will naturally connect with each other through our thoughts and our feelings. So just do it. You've got it. Yeah. And we can't wait to, oh, I hope we get so many different types of writers and different directions and have them all be in the same space. That'll be so fun. So yeah. yeah. Thank you, Ashley. Thanks, Robert. <laughs>